making my version of shrimp and grits now i'm a puerto rican born raised and i live in the northeast of the u.s a lot of my southern friends will ask what does a northern yankee know about grits well my first exposure to grits was from the movie my cousin Vinny. yes that my cousin Vinny with this popular scene what is a grit anyways now there are all kinds of different ways to prepare grits and i chose to prepare grits the way it was described in the movie my cousin Vinny. how do you cook it well you simmer it in water for 15 to 20 minutes put it on the plate and add butter when I met my daughter's mother, who came from the South, and much of her family is from the South as well, she's the one that introduced me to extra buttery grits. As I started to experiment with different grits recipes, I realized that I personally love an extra creamy, extra buttery, and extra cheesy cheese grits from the stove. And the first thing that I'm going to prepare is the grits before the shrimp. The first thing that I will do is that I will wash my grits. I will wash and drain, wash and drain my grits a few times until the water is clear. I found that for me, it has helped to really create a great creaminess with my grits. As you can see, I am using my hand to really wash, and wash the grits and I do this a few times. So on the stove, I will set it up from a low to a medium, medium low heat. I bring the grits over to the stove and I will start adding my milk right about here. There you go. Uh, I don't have I don't like using measurements. I just, you know, go by eye, by my feel, you know. I love I love really creamy grits, so I tend to add a lot of milk. Some people they will uh, start using water and then add milk later, but me personally, I love that extra extra creaminess. So all I do is I add, I add milk. Next, I add my butter as you saw right there, and I start stirring. Now this is a slow cooking process. This is a really, especially if you want that creaminess, it's a slow cooking process. So you're constantly going to be uh, stirring, stirring and stirring and adding more butter. Because remember, this is extra buttery, extra buttery. And I use a salted butter. And the reason why I use a salted butter is so that way I don't have to add salt into my grits. Uh, as I'm getting older, my birthday is next month, I'm turning 40, you know, I have to really worry about my salt intake, so, you know, I'm not gonna add extra salt to the grits as I'm using, uh, you know, uh, butter with salt. And I'm, I'm just gonna keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it and letting it cook little by little. At this point, I added a little bit more milk as it was getting thick, which I love it thick, but you know, for the purposes of what I needed to be creamy, uh, I added a little bit more milk, which will help to prepare it uh, for the cheese. And I already added a ton of butter in there. It's already buttery. Unfortunately, the, uh, the light didn't sh doesn't show how buttery it is, but I'm just stirring it constantly. Now for the sake of really having it buttery, I added some more butter. This is uh, the tub butter, it's not margarine, it's tub butter. Uh, I need a little bit still on the spoon and I'm stirring it. You know, it's just, I love, I really love it buttery. You know, I got, again, I gotta thank my daughter's mother for that. The next thing I do is that I start to add cheeses. And the first thing is I add a good amount of cream cheese. I love, uh, you know, uh, it was a good recipe that I found and I added a good amount of cream cheese. As you can see, I'm adding my, uh, my second. I add more, but for the sake of time, I'm just not gonna show it all. Now, this is where you start to stir it. 
and you want to really incorporate that cream cheese mixing in with the butter and the milk I mean and the really good creaminess of the grits you just want to incorporate it before you start adding the other cheeses and now here I come with a good amount of shredded cheddar cheese I like a good sharp cheddar and uh, you know just really incorporate it you can use whatever you want now here's a little more cheese as you can see this cheese is for me to eat you know I gotta eat some of that cheese too and enjoy it <laughs> But you want to start mixing. Now you can use a mild, sharp cheddar. You, you know, I mean, I've seen people use brie and gruyere and things like that. But me personally, I love to use a really nice, sharp cheddar cheese. Uh, you know, shredded, whether you shred it yourself or buy it prepackaged, shredded, it doesn't matter. But you really want to start to incorporate that as well. Um, if you wanted to add a little bit more milk to help with the process. And I ended up adding a little bit more milk uh, to, to really help it uh, incorporate it. But for the most part, uh, this is done. This is done. Uh, you know, some people, they like to put it in the oven, bake it for a little bit. And some, and some people will add a little bit of pepper, whatever. You do what you want to do. Me personally, I love it like this. Creamy and buttery and cheesy. And now it's time for the shrimp. Now you want to use a good amount of shrimp. Uh, I usually use either jumbo shrimp or a smaller shrimp. Not the soup shrimp. But you want to peel in the vein. At this point, you can just season it how you want to season it. This is just the seasoning that I have at the moment. I have to go grocery shopping, but you know, this is where I season it. Now you really just want to, you know, really get the seasoning in there. You really just want to season it. Use your hands, both hands, one hand, whatever. But you really want to get that seasoning in there uh, just to cover every part of the shrimp. Now once it's seasoned and you let it sit for like maybe a minute in the fridge then you can just easily put it on a pan and cook it like that but me personally I add some flour. Why do I add some flour? Because as soon as I add the flour, I'm going to really incorporate it in there because I'm deep frying. You see, I'm not going to create a separate dredge seasoning or whatever. No, I'm going to immediately incorporate the flour in there so I can really deep fry and get a good crispiness. Like I said, this is my version of shrimp and grits and instead of just doing like a saute shrimp or like a shallow uh, fry I'm gonna really deep fry them so I'm gonna adjust the stove to be a medium high to high heat because you want the shrimp to cook fast it doesn't take long for shrimp to cook so you just wanna do a medium high to high heat and when the oil is ready you begin to add your shrimp you want to spread them out evenly. You don't want them clumped up or anything. You want to just spread them out evenly. And as you're cooking, you're going to start just kind of moving them around, tossing them a bit. So that way they all cook evenly. They all cook around the same time. It doesn't take long for shrimp to cook. So you really have to be careful that you're not burning the shrimp. You're not burning the, the seasoning and flour coating. And now it's time to take the shrimp out. As you can see, they're golden brown on the outside. They're perfectly cooked on the inside. You're just going to uh, strain them out, put them uh, in a bowl with a uh, paper towel or napkins to drain the excess fat off. And then when all your shrimp is cooked, it's time for plating. And this, my friends, is my version of shrimp and grits. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And please feel free to comment your favorite way to make shrimp and grits. Thank you very much. You guys down here hear about the ongoing cholesterol problem in the country.